Hey guys, welcome back for yet another episode of Uncut Gems with Slim. I am super excited. Today we are wrapping up the Selfology series, The Study of Yourself, and I'm super excited because for this month's Gemstone episode, we have a super exciting guest, Miss Selfology herself, Miss Re Botts Ward. So she came up with this Selfology framework, and she is the one that I mentioned earlier in the series that this entire series was themed after a spoken word that she did a while back. And so I'm super excited to have Miss Rebots on the show. Hey girl, how's it going? It's girl, it's going, you know, 2020 been what it's been, 2021 is continuing to be. Right. Um, but you know, hanging in there, definitely having a lot of gratitude for the blessings of this season in the midst of all the chaos. So you know. Yes, I'm super excited. I feel like 2020 was kind of like a season preparing me for what's going to happen in 2021. And although mm. 2020 was a little like, eh, it wasn't what we expected. I feel like I still had major growth and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for this year. Me too. I feel the same way. And my birthday is on Thursday. So everything <laughs> yes. Is it's like for me a new year of my life you know every January is like okay new year of my life excitement for what's to come so I feel you yes that's so exciting so to the people listening and the people tuning in on YouTube I'm super excited because we have the one the only Miss Selfology herself if y'all been tuned in all month y'all know that we've been doing this Selfology series that's been based off of this spoken word that I heard um that we did a few years ago and so we talked about self-awareness self-love self-esteem self-confidence all of that and so I'm super excited to have Re in the building to talk more about Selfology and just her journey of self-discovery so I will allow you to introduce yourself to the people. <laughs> all right, sis. First of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, I did that poem who some years ago. And so I'm just really <laughs> honored to know that it that it spoke with you and stuck with you. Rila Violet Botts Ward. I go by Re. Um, I am a doctoral candidate, PhD student at UC Berkeley, and I'm in African American and African Diaspora Studies, and I'm studying Black women's healing spaces. So everything I do with my academic work, my personal work, I'm just immersed in Black women's healing. Um, yes. I'm also the founder of Black Women Healing, um, Black Women Healing and Women with the X instead of an E. Um, you can find us on IG and our website is blackwomenhealing.com. Um, and it's just an initiative about bringing women together, Black women together in our healing journeys and having real and honest, authentic conversations about what that journey looks like. Um, and we host exhibitions, courses, um, and research and publications uh, all around Black women healing. So my first book is coming out real soon. Yes. Um, that, that gets into my own personal healing journey. Uh, so yeah, I'm just I'm just so honored and grateful that I get to do this work and that I get to really live a life that's holistically committed to my healing as a Black woman and sharing what I can, how I can with other Black women on their journey. So. Yeah, girl. I'm hella excited to be here. <laughs> and I'm super excited to have you. I'm also excited that um, your portion of selfology and Black women healing is about the healing process. Because I feel like a lot of times we talk about the glitz and glamour of being self-confident and being self-aware and all this stuff, but we don't really talk about the process and how that in itself, the process is progress, but it takes yes. time to heal and to grow and everything like that so I would just love for you to share details about um you can either start with the selfology framework or kind of dive deep into your journey of self-discovery 
Mm -hmm. So yeah, I could just start first with selfology. So in 2015, I started the selfology movement and I had just graduated from Spelman. I was at a place in my life where I felt like everybody else told me who I was supposed to be, but I was really trying to clarify for myself, like, who am I for real? And I kept mm -hmm. feeling like there was a disconnect between who I really was and what everyone saw of me. And, you know, Selfology actually started because I was trying to write my first book, which is the book that's coming out now. And I was trying to figure out what would the different sections of that book be. And mm -hmm. I went back to the poetry I had been writing since I was 13 years old. I've been a poet for so much of my life. And I was looking at the themes of my poetry. And poetry was the way that I linked into my own self-discovery. It was the way that I was able to clarify for myself uh what was true for me and mm -hmm. that's constantly changed over time right but when i was 13 i wrote this poem called africa and so i always was really interested in black women's stories from enslavement and before that and this whole poem was about this black woman who had been enslaved and was trying to keep her keep and protect her daughter right from harm and that mm -hmm. was all my heart and spirit since i was 13 so ancestry was always like so central to how i understood myself and i'm also a victim survivor of sexual abuse and so there was a lot of poems about being sexually assaulted right and, and so mm -hmm. then my relationship with my body was such a central part. So the more I looked at these poems from my childhood to my early 20s, that's really where the selfology framework came from because I was like, okay, the sections of this book are going to be body, mind, soul, ancestry, and spirituality. Because at that time, I felt like these are the five layers of the self. And I'm, yeah. as a Black woman, am trying to process and make sense of these five layers of myself through my poetry. Now, when I wrote, you know, the early version of the book, I didn't even imagine the selfology movement. I just was trying to write my book. And then I made a website for my book. And then I made these little sections. I'm like, oh, I could do workshops. And it just evolved over time, you know? And that was in 2015 and 2016, I was traveling and speaking. And girl, when I tell you, I had a very rude awakening um, mm -hmm. around 2017, 2018. Um, and just realized that even as I was this woman who appeared so confident to so many people and that I was talking about self-love, I was hella disconnected from myself. Mm. I didn't even know that. I didn't even understand that I was not here with me as I was like traveling all around the country, giving these talks and lectures. Um, and I felt like such a fraud. I felt like mm. A uh, fake and I was so embarrassed and I had so much shame and it was a wake-up call I went through a really traumatic experience and that experience propelled me out of an illusion I realized mm. that even as I was speaking the language of self-love and self-care and healing I was existing as a hologram I've only discovered this through therapy and through my own healing journey that there's ways we can talk the talk and walk the walk, but at the end of the day, your healing journey is really about what it feels like to be alone with yourself, what it feels like to be really still and silent when it's just you and God and your ancestors in a room and like nobody else, can you really sit with yourself? I still have That's a struggle it. with that. I really, mm. really struggle with that to this day. And, and like you said earlier, it takes so much time. But I thought for so long that my worth was tied to what I could give to people. You know what I'm saying? And so I, mm -hmm. like, I intellectualized this idea of healing and self-care. And so I knew all the words and the language but I had not really truly internalized it for myself and really sat with the pain and the hurt and the grieving that I needed to do. And I realized when this traumatic experience happened, it forced me to question my whole life.
it just because I thought I knew everything. I thought I had the answers. I thought I had it all together. I was like, I'm a I'm a black woman. I'm healing. I'm getting my PhD. I'm lit. Mm-hmm. I'm popping. Everybody mm-hmm. loving me. You, I was feeling myself, but I was feeling the hologram version of myself. Mm, I, I was it. not. I was not experiencing my life. I was experiencing disassociation, which I've come to understand now is a form of a a traumatic response where you are not physically here with yourself. Like you can go through the motions and go through your whole day, but it's as if you're outside of yourself, like watching a movie of your life. And I always felt like that. I understand it was a trauma response. I just was like, I could do hella shit at once. Like I could be on stage in front of all Mm -hmm. of these people talking about my trauma and feel nothing because I'm so disconnected from my feelings because that's the way I've learned to survive. And I got to a point where I realized this isn't healthy and nobody else but me can say that because everybody else on the outside thinks I'm so healed and I'm so healthy and all these people are telling me how much I'm inspiring them. But if I'm not even okay with me, I don't want none of it. I got to that point where I just went into hiding. I was like, I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be known. I just want to be present. Like it was this urgency of like, you are not in your own life. You are Mm. living on Instagram. You are living on stages. And I realized I had this addiction to validation. I was addicted to people celebrating me and praising me. I was addicted to people giving me likes and views and comments. And I always needed more, more, more. I need more followers, more audiences, more bookings. Like I just wanted to have a bigger stage and a bigger platform and a bigger audience. But the root cause of that is... I don't believe that I am enough. And I mm. I did not even under, I didn't have no concept of that. I just was doing what I've always done since I was a child. The way I received love was to perform. So I was mm-hmm. always performing for everyone else's validation and acceptance. And what was difficult for me was I always felt like I was so real. You know, I was like, people fuck with me because I'm hella real. Mm. But the thing, is I was, I I never was fake in a sense of like being someone that you're not. It was more so that I was a hologram of this woman who I wanted to be, but I never fully embodied that person because I was never still and silent and alone enough with myself to really meet myself in an intimate, enclosed way. And that was so hard to sit with and process and make sense of. Cause I always thought I was this one woman. And that's what I've realized. Like when you really, really dive in deep into your healing, you really gotta ask yourself, am I ready to discover that I'm not who I thought I was? That's am so I good. ready to be so honest with myself that I tell myself the truth about who I really am? And that don't mean you a bad person. That don't mean you horrible. It means that we have been through traumas that have required us to respond to life in certain ways. Mm-hmm. And at a certain point, you don't need that anymore. I did not need to keep performing for love. I needed to do that for my parents because that was the only way I knew how to receive love for my parents. But I'm an adult now. I don't have to keep living my life this way. It's actually harming me now. Mm. So I had to be so honest that I would look at myself and be like, damn, that's ugly. Like, I got to look at the ugly stuff about myself and really sit with that and process the root of why am I like this? And I felt so much shame, too, because so many people had, like, told me that what I was doing was changing their life. And then I just felt really like... I just felt so guilty because I felt like it was all a lie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I realize I have to forgive myself and release a lot of shame about Mm -hmm. that because I did what I knew at that time. And now I know something different. So now I'm doing something different. So I'm learning self-compassion 
as I look at that ugly stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes we can look at the ugly stuff and then critique ourselves so hard. And I'm working on just being like, I did what I knew. I really did do my best. Yeah, and it you got to give yourself that grace. Yes, yes. That's what I be working on so much because... I understand, like, I know better now, so I'm doing different now. And and that's what I realized, too. Like, every single phase of my journey, I'm going to be learning new stuff. I'm going to always be growing. I had Alex L's book, After the Rain. She said, like, the moment that I think I have all the answers and that I'm done is the most dangerous place to be. Because if ever I think that there's no more growth to do, I'm going to be stuck and stagnant. Like, there is no healed. There is no right. done point. Every single day I'm living this life, there's more for me to learn and grow into. A fear about that, even with my book coming out and stuff, because it's like, Two months from now, I might feel like, oh my God, I don't believe what I said anymore. And I realize I can only write from where I'm at today. I can only Correct. put out or, you know, share from where I am today, but I can't promise that I'm going to stand by that same thing tomorrow. And I mm -hmm. think that's how I had started to feel about selfology. I just had felt a lot of shame and guilt and I didn't want to even be associated with it because I just I knew in myself that that was not um the healthiest I knew it wasn't the healthiest healing process for me because it became about um something that was not making me well I literally used the language of healing to be deeper into my addiction to be deeper into my insecurities and that brought me so much shame and then I realized mm -hmm. selfology wasn't all bad. It's just, I have all this guilt and shame around it. But even just you telling me how much it impacted you with other people, it's like, just because I put something out from a place that wasn't the purest in myself, that don't mean that it couldn't have still impacted somebody. And I have to forgive myself for what I did in a time when that was all I knew how to do. So I'm just that is so good, man. Like I literally feel like I'm like evaluating how I be moving and stuff like that <laughs> just based off of what you said, because I feel like a lot of times we do kind of live this hologram version of ourselves because that we think that that is who we really are and that's like you know I'm doing my thing whatever whatever but really it's like actually that is just a cover-up for mm. like not dealing with all the different things so this is really good and the fact that you talked about like forgiving yourself I feel like a lot of times people are so hard on themselves and then with them being hard on themselves, then they get stagnant in their growth because they don't know how to forgive yes. to move forward. Yes, girl, that's real. And I've been doing this um, this program. I don't know if you're familiar with the 12-step program. They have like Alcoholics Anonymous. It's like a 12-step program for recovery. Okay. But they have a group called Adult Children of Alcoholics and Dysfunctional Families. And it has been so life-changing for me. It's basically like a program of recovery where you go to different meetings with people who are struggling from the same types of thing as, as you, for me, just growing up in a dysfunctional family. My parents wasn't alcoholics, but I grew up in a dysfunctional family. And in all honesty, so many of us did, but we're not able mm -hmm. to do it. comes really foundational to the trauma that we experienced. That don't mean our parents was horrible or anything. Anything. Our parents did their best, but we live in a dysfunctional ass society, especially as black folks. So of course right. there's dysfunctional <laughs> things about how we grew up that we got to heal from. And this program, they talk a lot about um, the critical inner parent, which is basically like the critique that you have, the way that we be hard on ourselves. It's like you have a voice of some a parent, whether it was your parent or just society at large mm -hmm. that's like you're not good enough you're not doing enough 
projecting all of that guilt and shame onto you. And then they talk about developing a loving parent, which is like an inner loving voice inside yourself. And that has helped me so much. I just be practicing and leaning into like, when I hear that critical parent voice, this being like, girl, that's so shameful. You have so much to be ashamed of. Like you are not a good person. All them voices. Then I just have in my hand like let me shift into that loving parent voice and i'm cultivating it with the help of god right i'm cultivating this voice that's like i'm so proud of you you are doing wonderful like yes. i got you girl we getting through this day i know that was hard i know that was heavy it's okay that you did what you needed to do to survive you're learning a new way to live and i'm so proud of you you know just that's shifting good the voice in my head and realizing that the more loving I am with myself, that don't mean that I'm not accountable, right? Because sometimes we be wanting to be so kind and gentle that we're not accountable. There's a mm -hmm. way to be honest and they talk about in their program, rigorous honesty. Like there's a way to be rigorously honest with yourself and vulnerable and transparent with yourself and very tender and loving and gracious and finding the balance between those two things is hella important yes girl i feel like where's the link so i could join but no that's so good man i definitely feel like a lot of listeners are going to be able to get something from what you've shared and it's also going to pose some questions for them when they're just like trying to grow in their journey of self-discovery and like maybe the next time they do something now that you've introduced the idea of having that loving parent as well as the critical parent you're able to like when they're doing something and that critical parent starts saying, you know, criticizing them and things like that, they'll remember like, oh, I remember on a podcast, like, let me get myself my little loving parent real quick and then, you know, be able to navigate. So that's so good. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any thing you want to share as far as the black women healing because I know that's kind of what the book is about and everything like that so I definitely want you to share that because we do have a lot of black women listening and we can always yes. use some more black women uplifting black women so please mm -hmm. share anything all the black women um yeah so when I when I went into my shell and of shame right and guilt about selfology um I realized that I needed the room to grow and expand. And so the selfology movement transitioned into Black Women Healing. And so on our website, blackwomenhealing.com, there are a number of different frameworks. Because that's what I realized. Like, I was so, I needed to be right. I needed mm -hmm. the answer. And so I just felt like selfology has to be the answer for everybody's healing journey. That's how, mm -hmm. that's how strong my ego was, right? <laughs> so strong and wrong that I had the answer that I had figured everybody's healing journey out. And when I realized that selfology could not no longer hold the complexity of my own healing journey, that's when I was like, I can't keep acting like this is the thing you know what i'm saying yeah so black healing is so much more expansive like selfology is definitely still an important framework of thinking about okay the different layers of ourselves but we have a number of different frameworks on blackwomenhealing.com we talk about inner child healing inner black girl child which my book is called mourning my inner black girl child and it's all about my relationship to my black girlhood as a black woman and thinking about how we as black women oftentimes don't have full access to girlhood. We don't have full access to childhoods because we've experienced so much adultification, being told we was too grown when we was children, right? All these mm -hmm. ways that we didn't have the freedom of innocence that a lot of other children of other races might have. And yeah. something that came up for me so much like a huge shifting point in my healing journey was doing inner child healing realizing that we all have an inner 
child within us. And for black women, we have an inner black girl. And that little black girl is desiring our love and affection. And when I was so addicted to being validated by everybody else, that was my inner child just telling me she wanted me to love her. And so I'm mm -hmm. thinking a lot about like the relationship between my inner black girl child and my loving black mother. You know what I'm saying? Like my mm -hmm. inner loving black mother. How do I become the mother to myself that my inner black girl child needs. And I talk a lot in the book about my mom and her struggle with depression. And I love my mom. And I know that my mom did her very best. And she did a damn good job. Mm -hmm. And she was a black woman, single mother, raising two girls and trying to handle her depression in the best way she knew how. And so I've learned to have so much love and compassion for my mom while also being honest about the fact that if you are a little black girl growing up with a black mother who is depressed, there are certain things you're not gonna get that you need from a parent. And so mm -hmm. I'm sitting with that and I'm processing that now and realizing how do I give that little black girl who was alone in the bedroom with nobody there, feeling like she ain't have no food to eat and was so isolated and alone and lost faith in God. Like I struggled a lot, you know, when I was a child and how do I just, sometimes I just be doing this girl, just give her myself mm, a yes. hug. How do I hug <laughs> myself? How do I love that little black girl in me? How do I let her come out and have her say, and let her know she did not do nothing wrong. And I'm here to love her unconditionally. And I'm mm -hmm. here to make sure she's safe and comforted and cared for. And so this relationship between my little black girl self and my mother um, is really central to the book. It's also, um, you know, it's heavy. I just want to name that. I be scared sometimes because people be like, ooh, a poetry <laughs> book, healing. Uh-uh, sis, let me just pour you. <laughs> it is a heavy-ass book. It's very uh -huh. heavy. It's dark. It's intense because it's about the ugly, dark, scary parts of my True. feelings. Book. Yeah. And, and most of the book feels like that. Um, but it really, it really is about that, that journey inward and how, how daunting and intense it can be. Um, and so Black women healing... It's just really about a space for Black women to really come together and think through these messy questions about our healing. So we, we talk about the inner Black girl child. We have another framework called Neon and Nude that's just about like, I can be neon and nude at the same time. You know, I can be hella bright, hella hood, hella ratchet, right? Mm -hmm. And I can be deep and soulful. Um, it's just about the duality and the complexity of our identities and not trying to box ourselves in. I center a lot every day around the way black girls because I think it's so important for us to realize that we don't have to change what's real and true about us. I had a mm -hmm. lot of um, difficulty making sense of my identity because I always was a little hood and a yeah. little deep at the same time. And I just didn't understand. I was like, how can I be so deep and soulful and be so ratchet at the same time? I just <laughs> didn't understand. And I just realized I can be both. I can be all of those things. I don't have to compartmentalize myself to make other people feel comfortable. Like. I am, I, I put this in um, my dissertation, like I am a hood ass healer of myself. You know, I am, so I am hood and I am healing. And it's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And I talk about how the ghetto is sacred and the sacred is ghetto. Like we are so often taught that like what makes us the most black, what makes us the most us is, is not, um, it's not deep or it's not mm -hmm. intellectual, it's not scholarly, it's not transformative, right? And it's not sacred, it's not spiritual. And so I, that's really what I think about a lot too with my work. So Black Women Healing really is just a platform that encompasses all of the work that I do. My research, my dissertation, which is called I See You Sis, Curations of Black Women's Healing Spaces in Oakland. So it's just about like me and my homegirls kicking it, getting my hair braided, going to 
the little parades in Oakland and just how we cultivate healing for ourselves in Oakland. Um, mm -hmm. It's also the healing circle that I host month uh, all self-identified black women are welcome um so you can find more information on our ig page but we meet every first tuesday of the month virtually um so yeah it's just a space that really houses um uh, my healing journey my academic work my creative work and that was another thing that felt important to me in my healing journey i started to realize how important creativity was to black women's healing and so black women and healing is really centering artistry and creativity and affirming that us being black women and girls is art in and of itself you know yes. we are art. the way we survive in this world is art the way we lay our baby hairs the way we snatch our braids Period. right Period, yes. sis. okay it's all art and wanting to really affirm just how much we as black women create and and making a space for black women artists also so that's why i host uh, biannual exhibitions this year we're doing um black girl quarantine it's an exhibition of black women healing in the wake of 2020 so we also are going to be doing a call for artists soon we're doing a virtual exhibition um just of the art and you know what black women have been creating in 2020 in quarantine like just talking about how we survived through these times um so yeah i think before selfology was much more of um something that subconsciously was rooted in my need to like tell people the right way to heal and mm -hmm. black women healing is more so just a space for black women to come authentically and share where you asked this and me releasing this idea that I have to have all the answers because it's still so much I don't fucking know. <laughs> and I'm just in a space with black women learning collectively, you know, as we go. That's so good. Well, I really appreciate you sharing. Like, I feel like I'm a, before this goes live, I gotta go back. <laughs> And I got to re-listen because this is so good and it's so much to unpack and just really diving into that self-discovery, but really looking at what's real about your situation, what's real about your trauma, how you responded to your trauma, whether you know it or not. Like, because I feel like a lot of times, like you, some of the stuff that might be considered trauma you will in immediately like think of it as trauma. So you're like diddy bopping, thinking like, oh, I ain't never had no issues in life, and da 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 da. And then when you start looking back to the root of why you do what you do or why you act in the way you act, then you be like, oh, well, you know that I did have some childhood trauma that I ain't never unpacked. And so I think this conversation was needed. Mm, and we've been taught to think that it's not traumatic because people want to silence our truth. Because if we went through trauma, then other people got to be real about how they caused us harm. And they don't always want to do Woo! that. Yes. That's Girl. me. That is so Girl. true. That is so true. Oh, my God. Poem with y'all um, that's called Black Holes. And it's just about me being a black woman trying to be whole and feeling like I have all these holes in me. Um, yes. So I can share this piece now and then you can ask me any other final questions and stuff. That's cool. Yes, please okay. share. <laughs> Again, y'all, it's intense. So I'm going to just give y'all a little trigger warning. <laughs> uh, black holes. Me, a black woman who is a black hole holds close everything that is sacred. Me, a black hole who is a mother to myself, holds close everything that is chaotic, floating like friction galaxies that escape my slit of wrist. Me, a black girl gone wrong, holds close the black hole of a womb that ruptures each time I take me home. Me whose unhealed holes make her not know herself. 
Me, with each black hole in my heart, with each black scar that scrapes my throat. Me, a black girl who is also a black hole, who be stuck in the hold of the wake. Me, who have no map to make sense of. Me, a whole ass black girl, woman, child, womb of the wake, wandering soul. Me, who sent something greater than flesh and spirit. Me, a collection of black holes, a curation of the unclothed, a citation of bare bones, naked, nude, unnurtured holes in every single black girl, woman, child I know. Me, a mosaic of all the unwhole folks who claim black and womb by their surname. Me, a compilation of catastrophe, an exhibition of the catastrophic Eurosphere that forced me into black holes. Me, who is hurting from all those holes. Me, a skin cell, me, an inkwell, me, unwatered, me, a plucking out a root, me, a floating with no shoes, a feather with no grounding, me, a moment of collapse in space time, a sinking into my own black hole with hopes of coming back up whole. Me, a handful of honey, a hair strand of kink, a cloth patterned with memory, a gourd made for drinking, a psalm and a jazz made for thinking. Me and all the things I never knew to love float in the abyss of me. Me and the combination of every black hole I own rupture, a myth of bliss. We become unknown to ourselves, a Satan waiting to bloom. Soon, black hole, you will learn how you survived, how you climbed yourself outside yourself right before your moon. Soon, black girl, you will learn the love of mystic darkness is what saved you. The sacred of her covering, the care of her hold on you, how she stuck you in and makes you stuck with sin just so you could return to you soon. You yearning, mourning, breathing black hole, you black woman child will thank your womb for rebirthing you for renaming your black hole, whole. Holder of all that is sacred, releaser of all that has wings, that which can afford to fly from you and find home in someone else's. Soon, my child, you will see that there could be no growth beyond black holes, that journeying deeper into some soil is the only way to work with your hands to heal the holes who summon you. Soon, someone will say something about a hatred for darkness and you will understand it as an anti-God, a hatred for holes, a refusing of being whole. Soon, you will realize that Black girls with holes all learn to disguise themselves as you. Soon, you will see in the yearning of your womb that darkness always brings truth. Yes, ma'am. Oh my goodness. That was so heavy, but so good. Thank it's you, so sis. real. It's so Reading it now, I just had an epiphany about what the poem was about. And I did not even know that. But it says, just sitting here talking to you, like how I was talking about the inner child and the loving parent. I just realized like that second half of the poem is like my loving parent talking back to me. And I didn't even mm -hmm. see that just now so thank you for this space you know i just had a whole epiphany about my book girl yes. and I, just know. <laughs> I am so glad to have you on today man like you have literally shared so much and I just feel I'm going to take something from this, but I know the people listening are definitely going to get something from this. And so I'm super excited. You're definitely going to have to um, let me know when the book drops so I can let my listeners know so they can know where to find it. Um, but you can feel free to share um, your platforms and we'll put it on the screen and everything like that. But feel free to shout out your platforms and your upcoming book. 
Thank you, sis. So yes, the book is coming out so soon. The pre-order should be available um, in the next few weeks or so. Um, so okay. I'll definitely be keeping y'all updated on my IG about that. Um, and the book is set to officially release on February the 20th. So y'all heard it here. I ain't told nobody yet. Um, yes, yeah, so my IG is Rela Violet, R E E A V. L-E-T-T-E, Rela Violet. Um, and our IG for Black Women Healing is Black Women with the X Healing. And our website also is blackwomenhealing.com. Awesome. So I will put all of her information in the show notes and the description box so you guys can check out Black Women Healing as well as know when the book is coming out. Make sure you guys follow um, the podcast on Instagram. We are now on Instagram. So make sure y'all follow us at Uncut Gems with Slim. Subscribe. We're on all streaming platforms as well as YouTube. So make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe. And until next week. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to the podcast podcast and feel free to connect with me on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Slimmer Shea. That's S-L-I-M-R-E-S-H-A-E. Links will be listed in the show notes and until next time, love yourself and be you, Tiffle. When you